Hello, my name is Megan Otto. No matter where you're from, no matter where you are, no matter where you are in your faith journey or your life journey, we are glad that you have joined us here today at UUMC. We hope it's a good experience for you and you feel closer to God and to one another. Today's the third Sunday of Advent, and so we'll have an Advent wreath lighting, we'll have some good uh, Christmassy hymns, and we're so glad that you are here to join us today. Hear now this call to worship. All creation holds its breath. The time is almost here. The heavenly choir of angels waits for its cue to sing. Excitement is all around us. Prepare your hearts. The grace of God takes on human form. Good news, Emmanuel, God with us, comes to us. We gather to make ready our hearts for the coming of Christ and our hope. Amen. Please join me in the lighting of the Advent wreath. The wilderness and the dry land shall be glad. The desert shall rejoice and blossom. Like the crocus, it shall blossom abundantly and rejoice with joy and shouting. What does joy feel like in the new world? Joy feels like everlasting love. Joy feels like the freedom to be who God created me to be. Joy feels like sharing love and kindness. Joy feels like pride. Advent is the beginning of this new world, a better world where joy boldly bubbles up in unexpected places. May it be so. Amen. Holy God, whether it's through angels or music, friendship or stories, study or nature, when you speak, we long to hear it. In a world as chaotic and broken as ours, we could use your words of hope and healing. With gratitude we pray. Amen. Scripture reading, Luke chapter 1, verses 39 through 56. Mary got up and hurried to a city in the Judean highlands. She entered Zechariah's home and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leapt within her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. With a loud voice, she blurted out, God has blessed you above all women, and he has blessed the child you carry. Why do I have this honor that the mother of my Lord should come to me? As soon as I heard your greeting, the baby in my womb jumped for joy. Happy is she who believed that the Lord would fulfill the promises he made to her. Mary said, with all my heart, I glorify the Lord. 
In the depths of who I am, I rejoice in God, my Savior. God has looked with favor on the low status of his servant. Look, from now on, everyone will consider me highly favored because the mighty one has done great things for me. Holy is God's name. God shows mercy to everyone from one generation to the next who honors him as God. God has shown strength with his arm. God has scattered those with arrogant thoughts and proud inclinations. God has pulled the powerful down from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. God has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty handed. God has come to the aid of his servant Israel, remembering his mercy, just as he promised to our ancestors, to Abraham and to Abraham's descendants forever. Mary stayed with Elizabeth about three months and then returned to her home. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Loving God, we give you thanks for the gift of this day, for your holy and living word, its meaning in our lives today and forevermore. We give you thanks for this holy season that we know is Advent. And we ask that in these moments, the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O come, O come. Emmanuel. Well, this gospel lesson is perhaps one of the most well-known and familiar in all the Advent season. We hear about Mary who is visited by an angel, a messenger of God. Mary is told by this messenger that she will have a child and that this child will be the savior of the world. Mary says yes to God's amazing and life-changing invitation. After saying yes, we are told in the scriptures that she rushes off to see her cousin, Elizabeth. Elizabeth welcomes Mary in and Elizabeth herself is expecting a child. And one could say that this is also an unexpected and unusual pregnancy for Elizabeth is advanced in age. These two women, they spend time together. And my read on this text is that Mary stays with Elizabeth until Elizabeth gives birth to her child. We are told in the scriptures that the child Elizabeth is carrying will be known as John the Baptist. Earlier in Luke's gospel, this is how I get there, earlier in Luke's gospel, Elizabeth and her cousin Zechariah are told that they will have a child that will be John the Baptist. It says that Elizabeth was in seclusion for five months. The gospel goes on to say that Mary is told the news about Jesus in the sixth month. And as the story continues, we hear that Mary stays with Elizabeth for three months. So all of this timing, all this math in the scripture is fascinating to me. And it tells me a story about companionship, the sacred work of staying with one another, the value of relationships in times of waiting and anticipation. I imagine Mary being there when Elizabeth goes into labor and bears this child named John. It's a beautiful scene. And I used to focus on all of this, the baby being born and the baby that will one day soon be born. Through the years, I myself, have, I've come to assume and believe that my own experience as a mother provides me a unique perspective on this gospel lesson. I've preached in the past about how this meeting between Mary and Elizabeth was kind of like a baby shower, biblical times style. But what if, what if this story is not about a baby? At least not yet. A baby is coming, but is not yet here. Right now, what is here is two women who extend compassion to one another, love and care for each other. What if the story is not about our ability to bear a child? What if this story is not about our choice to give birth to a baby? What if this story is instead about our ability to bear God to one another? Theotokos, is ancient Christianity's name for Mary, especially in the Eastern Christian world. 
This word was used, <clears throat> used as the title for the mother of the savior of the world. And in Greek, this word is translated God bearer, one who carries God to others, one who shows forth compassion, the compassion, love, and mercy of God, one who embodies and shares a sacred presence to others. How might we continue to bear God to one another in these days? This is a story, not just for women. This is a gospel message for all of us, for all who choose to bear God, for all who choose to bring the good news of justice, mercy, and love to a world that is in need of healing, mercy, and compassion. I wanna share with you just a few words um, from a modern day written poem about the Magnificat by Marion Tarabasi, a United Church of Christ pastor. She writes, my soul is a lens for God, my spirit castanets, for God has made me pregnant for the sake of all the children forever. The mighty one finds sanctuary in me. God brings health care justice to all and denies the wealthy the power of prescription, gives clean wells to Africa and takes away designer water bottles. God deploys these new forces, hope for the suicidal, peace for the undocumented immigrant, joy for the jobless, love for those whose lives have been twisted by bad news. Friends, May we see God in one another and may we bear the love of God to one another in this season so that we can go forth into the world and extend love and justice, peace and mercy to all. Amen. At this time, in response to God's faithfulness, we offer ourselves to God if you are led to give financially, you can contribute by going to our website and finding the donate button. We lift up indeed um, all of our acts of service and compassion. We give thanks for the many volunteers that give of their time, talent, and treasure so that we can continue to do the work of God in this place. Amen.
Now let us gather our hearts and minds and also prepare ourselves for today's pastoral prayer. And this is the good time for us to uh, lift up our own prayer request to God, asking God's mercy and grace. God of yesterday and God of tomorrow, from the very beginning, you gave us the gift of relationships. From the very beginning, you tucked us into communities. From the very beginning, you wired us for connection. From the very beginning, you made our hearts capable of love. Thank you. This gift of relationship has led us to people who lead us to you and we are better for it. So today we want to say thank you for the many Elizabeths around us, for the people who have thrown open the doors for us, who revel in our joy, who point out your presence in our lives, and who are quick to affirm us and call us blessed. Those people come in many shapes and sizes, for some of us, the Elizabeth in our lives are family members, parents and grandparents who have cheered us on along the way. For others, teachers, coaches, neighbors, and scout leaders, professors, and counselors come to mind. And we cannot forget the way our chosen family, friends, and partners have been like Elizabeth for us. These people reminded us what love looks like in a hurting world, which has pointed us back to you. So today, God, we ask for your help in opening our eyes even more. We want to see you in those who love us well and in those who don't. We want to see you in those who are sitting next to us and in those we've never talked to. We want to see you not only in those who are family, who look like us or think like us, but in those who come from very different places and positions in life. From generation to generation, you have left your fingerprints all over creation. Help us to be like Elizabeth, to see and celebrate glimmers of your good news in all walks of life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Thank you for being in worship with us here online at University UMC. I wanna share with you that next Sunday on December 18th, we will be celebrating our Lessons and Carols service. This is a wonderful time to hear the story of the coming of Christ through scriptures as well as song. We will be providing an online service that is a Lessons and Carol service premiering right here on our YouTube channel. As well, we will have an in-person in our sanctuary service at 11 a.m. as well as at 7 p.m. We hope to see you at one or more of our Lessons and Carol services. And now, as you go forth into the week ahead, take these words with you. May the light of Christ be with you, and may you be guided by the love, peace, joy, and hope of this season. Amen.